YouTubers Electric Adventures here with another pickup video. Now, uh, it's not a specific game or anything, it's in a little box like this. So look, and we've got a um, anti static wrapping. So, this is my first pickup of 2013. And it is Atari Max's My IDE2 for the Atari 8-bit computers. Um, and this goes along with, I mean, this is his first run of this particular uh, one. Uh, it needs a compact flash card in here. I've got a couple. Hopefully they'll be okay um, for this card. There are different standards of compact flash cards, so we'll have to see how we go. Um, comes with some good, oops, bad contrast, sorry, good set of instructions, and there's a bit of an online forum as well. Um, the Atari Max makes quite a few different um, uh, solutions as well. There's the um, uh, there's the the card they have for cartridge they have for the Feather Coleco as well. Um, and the original MyAD flash cartridge and another flash cartridge and a one that clicks up to the peripheral interface. So they've done multiple stages. So this is the very latest one and you can actually choose which colour you want it in. So I chose green. I think there was blue and red and yellow and everything like that as well. So I'd be very interested in um, seeing how this works. Um, just be able to, because Atari 8-bit software doesn't pop up that often. I do have a lot of cartridges but there is an awful amount of disk and tape based Atari software um, that you just don't get to see and even if I got it you wouldn't be guaranteed that it was going to work you know tapes and disks being what they are and how they're stored so it just allows me to get more use out of a set of computers that I really like so what I'll do I'll go and muck around with a compact flash card see whether I have the right one if I don't have the right one there might be a bit of gap between taping this and doing the next section of demoing the cartridge all right, I'll catch you later. Right, I've uh, dusted off the old Atari 800XL. I've got the cartridge plugged in with a 8GB um, SanDisk compact flash. I'll just take that out so you can have a look. So, I mean, this is a reasonably um, uh, new. It's an 8GB. It doesn't seem to care about that being a large one. I was worried that it might need a 4. I've only got one 4. Um, which I actually tried to start with, but I uh, didn't quite follow the instructions to the absolute letter. There's one bit where you've got to keep something in memory. I didn't video all that because it took me quite a while of messing around to get this work. But I got it to work, and I'll um, show you how it works now. Okay, well I haven't played around with the standard setup pretty much at all, just followed the instructions um, to get things started. Um, now I just have a simple joystick plugged in, so you control it from that, or the keyboard. Um, my BIOS is the controlling BIOS. I'll just go on there and show you that. Um, and it allows you to boot the machine up. Uh, so any key for an all boot, or shift to reboot the cartridge, we can go into hold down option select start to go into setup which is like the um, partitioning tool um, option for internal basic uh, select select boot into reset menu start my ID images so you can start off with some ID stuff as well haven't really played about with any of that sort of stuff yet so um, shift and go back now we also have a uh, diagnostic section, the MyDOS Rescue Loader. Now that is what is actually now installed on the cartridge. So you, this is one that loads from the ROM. And what you do when you set it up, you set it up so that will actually boot from, from the cartridge. I suppose we might as well go back into here and we'll do a normal boot. And here's some clicking sound. And there we go, it's got MyDOS. So we have all these utilities. Um, here. Um, so, you know, do a directory of a disk, so let's just do that. And it shows we've got 
Um, so, so the card is petitioned so it has a, a boot disk on it and plus a FAT32 petition. Um, and you can add other petitions to it as well. Um, so you can have multiple actual disk images and things like that. So you have a um, so there's a, there's a disk here that I could use for saving some software on and stuff like that. So this will allow me to um, do some more of my exploring tutorials. Um, so it'll be very very useful. So we'll just go back to the main boot up sequence again. Now you have a basic fat loader here. Now I haven't changed this, they've updated it, so this we go into this, so this fat loader will let us load what's on the cartridge, but I can't like directly run anything from here. You've got to load the um, the new loader first, but I can set it up so that that will load automatically. I just haven't got into reading the instructions on how to do that. So we get into the new loader, which is I suppose a little bit trendier. Um, and we have ATR files, CAS files, and ROM files. ATR are disk files, CAS files obviously cassette, and then we have some ROMs. Um, and, and also back we have some of the samples. So to load a ROM, all you do is you click on it. And there we go, we have a game. in the wrong cartridge, so and if I prepare to reset it will just go back and as if that cartridge is is in the machine all the time. So we'll just go back in there. Okay and what I've done is I've downloaded a couple of different ROMs. Now I haven't tried all of them. Um, now I know this one's not working for some reason. No, this one works. I've tried that one and it works as well. So we'll try the next one on the list. Right, we've just ended up with a blue screen. So no good on that one. You know, there might be a few things that I need to adjust yet. As you can see, it's pretty easy to use, and there's a lot of things you can do with this. I mean, you can use it for development to test out your own things, um, and plus not have to wear out. So here we go, Keystone Papers, which is a game that I would love to have, but is dreadfully expensive to buy as an actual cartridge. And it's a great game, um, and I've always wanted to know like on this system what extensions they've done I mean I've seen the Coleco version which does a pretty good job so we have background music for a start and the objects have a lot more um oh, I should have gone on that lift have a lot more um detail in them and we have a bit more detail in the scenery as well something you lose time. I should just keep running, shouldn't I? I'll just catch the robber guy one time and then we can... It's interesting, I like those shadow things of the balloons and the aeroplanes that are going to come along in later levels and cause us problems. It's got quite good sound effects. things like level, you know level markers and things like that which is nice let's try another couple I can't 
remember what's in the ATR directory. Screaming wings, which sounded interesting. Let's see if that works. So this is a disk image, so it actually has to load for a little while. There we go, we've got the title screen. That's a 1942 copy. Oops, unofficial of course. So disk images take a little bit longer to load, but actually not as long as the original disk would have taken to load. Now I haven't actually tried a cassette image, and I'm not sure how long that will take to load. I think I've got one here. It's okay. I've got to... I won't try the Gauntlet one because it's got side A and B. We'll try the River Raid one. Okay, it doesn't like that one. And that one, okay, I might have to do something else to load cassette files. Um, now I'll do this one because I've never seen the cartridge before and actually found it quite interesting. So it's an Activision title. Um, and the idea is, and we're staying on the normal level, so this is our overall thing. So the big dreadnought up there is coming towards us. We send out our fighters. Got it on easy, and you have to block all the bits of the dreadnought. Now the guns, which are those things, will try and shoot you. As said, remember, this is on easy too. So, and what you've got to try and do is bomb all the vents, all the gun stations, and the bits of the bridge. And as little passes as possible. getting rid of it. See how it got a little closer then and down the bottom of the screen below my base are dots and they're the number of fighters I have to go and attack the dreadnought with. goes as soon as you press the joystick, like the joystick pressed up then. So it's really not doing a lot of shooting at us on this easy level. And from those ones launch, you know, fighter jets at you. Once we've got all the vents, the 
dreadnoughts destroyed. We get a bonus for how far away it was and how many um, how many ships. Now I'm not really sure because I was playing it on easy that um, you only get to play one dreadnought. But anyway, very interesting device. Um, uh, definitely helped playing with my Atari. 8-bit uh, computers a lot more and also will assist in me doing my exploring series um, I'll be able to type in some listings and save them to the cartridge rather than, to, rather than having to worry about discs and things like that Alright, I hope you found this interesting uh, Thanks to all my subscribers and I'll catch you all next time